everybody, Ziv Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to part two of a video series where I talk about how to treat recession on an upper canine. In this one, I'm going to give some guidelines to my colleague, Dr. Domic from Zagreb, Croatia, who sent me this case and was contemplating between the connective tissue graft and the tunneling technique. So in part two, I'm going to talk specifically about the incision outline for the connective tissue graft. If you didn't watch part one, go back and watch it. You'll get an idea how I evaluate the recession site before I treat it, what are the things that I look into, and then eventually make a decision on what I think is the best treatment option for this particular case. So this patient had a Miller class one recession lesion that extended just coronal to the mucogingival junction, a relatively short band of keratinized tissue, and a minimal attachment level. And I was mentioning two good options for this case. One is the classic connective tissue graft with a coronal reposition flap, and the connective tissue graft in the tunneling technique. And I mentioned in the previous video that the tunneling technique is a little bit more technique sensitive. The goal of part two video is to give you an idea about the sequence for a connective tissue graft uh, treating the canine, but also the premolar next door. And the first step uh, for any grafting procedure is to make sure that the root that you're grafting is receptive, meaning that there's no restoration, no contamination, calculus carries, so the new tissue can adapt to the receding root and also attach to it through a long junctional epithelium. So if you see a restoration, it's important to remove it and make sure that the root is relatively flat. If it's not part of the procedure, is root flattening. And what that does, it decreases the avascular zone. If you think about the uh, root of a cane or any tooth, it's typically convex. Once you flatten it, you will get a smaller surface area and a small, smaller area to graft because the root itself does not provide any vascularity. And making the root receptive by flattening it is very important to do. In this video, I'm not going to show you the actual procedure because this procedure was not done yet, but I'm going to give you some guidelines, uh, specifically the incision outline for the connective tissue graft. So this is going to help you when you have a similar case in your office, and I hope this helps Dr. Domic as well. The first incision is an intrasulcular incision uh, with a blade or a microblade uh, right into the sulcus of the teeth with recession. Now, for a conventional connective tissue graft, you need to extend this split thickness flap also into one tooth adjacent. So in this case, I'm going to create an intracellular incision, also the adjacent premolar and the lateral incisor. And this is typically the mesiodistal extent of my flap uh, to treat these two teeth. Now on some occasion, depending on tissue quality, depending on uh, the circumstances, sometimes you need to extend it more, but I would say at least one tooth adjacent is quite enough. So the intracellular incision is relatively simple to make. The question is, what do we do in the papilla region? Uh, it really depends on the level of recession. If you're dealing with multiple teeth with similar level of recession where the CJ is almost at the same level, we can choose an incision outline that is line angle to line angle, which is relatively simple to do and works quite well. But my preference, uh, generally speaking, is to create more of a triangular shape in the papilla region. And once this papilla gets depithelialized, I can now take this uh, flap shape that is more triangular and reposition it coronally. So this is, generally speaking, the flap outline, and that would be followed by a split thickness flap. Now, a lot of doctors are having some trouble uh, with a split thickness flap because uh, they think that the flap needs to be split right at the gingival margin, which is actually not, not practical to do. So what I recommend you do, you start your flap as a full thickness flap, and only after two or three millimeters transition into a split thickness flap. So technically, this is a combined flap that is full, starting as full, and then 
continuing as a split, and that allows the coronal repositioning, allows the flexibility of the flap. Step three is to depithelialize the interproximal tissue. So that's uh, either by using a number 15 blade or a, a micro blade. I don't re recommend using burrs, diamond burrs uh, that were suggested in the past. I get the best results just by using a conventional blade, uh, removing a very thin layer of epithelium. And this will allow you to take your split thickness flap and reposition it coronally. So the key is to have a flap that is mobile enough that allows you to cover the receding roots and a little bit beyond that. So you need to have uh, total passivity of the flap. You need to have quite a bit of uh, releasing in the apical part of the flap, in the periosteum, and that allows proper coronal repositioning. Once the root is ready and receptive and your flap is uh, adequately mobilized in a coronal direction, you can now harvest your connective tissue graft from the palate of the same side, suture it to the interproximal tissue with uh, simple interrupted sutures, ideally with gut, and the flap is sutured in a sling suturing technique, and that allows for the graft to be immobilized on the interproximal tissue, and the flap is overlying it, and this is pretty much the outline of the whole procedure. I hope you get the concept of it so you can understand what are the different steps that are involved. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, you can watch another video on the connective tissue graft. Uh, look it up on YouTube. This video will give you some more information on how to harvest the tissue. Uh, it's called the one incision technique made out of six incisions. It'll talk more about the flap design, a little bit more about the sequence, and also show you some cases so you can have a better understanding on, on the connective tissue graft. Next week, I'm going to talk about the tunneling technique in treating this case, so give you another good option. And I hope this is helpful to you and uh, Dr. Domic in Zagreb, Croatia. Feel free to share this video with other dentists that are interested in soft tissue grafting. You can also go to surgicalmaster.com to sign up for my weekly video and blog. There's so much to learn and understand. I look forward to sharing everything with you. I'll see you in part three. Thank you.